All right, welcome everyone. It's Chris Petri. Thanks again for uh, stopping by for another tutorial. Uh, we're working together to create this beautiful, nice, loose, tons of water, tons of paint, uh, glazing method uh, painting of a city scene. This is, uh, I think, either in Italy or Spain. A nice, uh, um, well-lit uh, walkway and uh, corridor going up to a... Uh, apartment building with a green door here so pops of color looks really good light coming from the top of the scene down into this uh, alleyway so this is like an alleyway and um, we have beautiful lines here tons of vertical lines making this feel very uh, you know a lofty uh, kind of like two mountains on both sides going up vertically and then like a beautiful doorway with some steps going up and some cafe tables here and everything just looks really good beautiful Good color mixtures, reds, yellows, blues, greens, um, lots of darks, lots of lights, kind of a good mixture of light and darks in this painting. So you're going to have a fun time seeing how we do this. Join along with me. We're going to cover all the colors you're going to use, how to mix everything. We're going to cover some new brushes. And this is how you loosen up. If you want to try out loosening up your paintings, you're going to get some mop brushes and uh, work with uh, a little more water, a little more paint and uh, use the gl glazing method uh, exclusively for painting in this kind of style. But I know many of you like this style, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to cover this style right now, right here. Uh, so we'll grab our art supplies, we're going to grab our pencils, our paper, our paints, our brushes, and we're going to uh, go through everything. And incidentally, just to mention, you don't have to actually have mop brushes right now at this point in time. If you don't have mop brushes, don't worry until you purchase them and get them and pick them up and um, shop around for them, whatever. Uh, you can still use your regular round brushes or square brushes, uh, flat brushes if you have. Whatever you have you use, you can still do the same uh, methods and techniques as we're doing here. Only thing I would mention is if you are going to use some round brushes uh, or square flat brushes, you'd want to use really large ones to get the big large washes on here that we're going to do for this tutorial. And you'll see we do everything here. I explain everything in great detail so you don't have to be guessing or second guessing on everything. I want you to have those details so that you can uh, make better looking paintings, okay? And if it's your first time here, great to see you here. And uh, we'll work together now. Let's get start with our pencil drawing first and a little bit of warm-up exercises. All right, we just saw the finished video, so let's get excited and get started. This is Chris Petrie, of course, and uh, welcome. You've just seen also the finished painting that we created, and um, now we're going to kind of see how we can learn to get to that result together here as we work. Um, basically, the title here of the video is Fun Ways to Learn New Techniques in Watercolor, and basically that's what we're going to do. We're going to learn a few new techniques, and we're, we're going to actually use some new brushes. Actually, that's a great way. If you want to learn to uh, maybe... Uh, some new techniques or to add a little bit different uh, flair to your work or to loosen up your work. A lot of times, many people, you know, you kind of see it in the comment section, right? People always say, oh, how do we loosen up or how do I loosen up my artwork a little bit? I feel like it's too, too tight or too, you know, just, um, it's not quite uh, feeling, you know, flowing and loose maybe as much as I would like it to. How do we do that? So we'll just cover it here. Why not? Just we'll take our time here and go at a good pace. So again, um, the idea is if you change your brushes, essentially, you can actually really take your techniques and your, you, actually even the finished look of your paintings to a different place, and, um, and it never hurts to experiment with different techniques and methods in watercolor. I always have done that since I started, so I never felt locked into one set of techniques or one type of brush or two or three or so forth or one palette or I stick with the same colors basically in my palette but I've changed different palettes I've changed different brushes I've always been experimenting always as I go and I and I still do but these are um, some mop brushes which are really fantastic because they and, and also a, um, a needlepoint brush to get some fine lines but these two mop brushes are actually just like phenomenal because you can use a quite a bit more water when you're making your creating your washes on your your painting and your glazings so what we'll do in this painting is we're going to create this scene but the first thing I wanted to do is just kind of sh show you the um, mop brush and they come in all kinds of various sizes I buy Alvaro Castanets uh, mop brushes on his uh, website 
Um, and I bought, I, you know, I, I bought his brushes and, and so forth for many years now. Um, so I've been following him for many, many years. And so two and a number, so this is a number two and a number six mop brush. And then there's the number 10 uh, needlepoint brush. So these are the main brushes I use when I'm using mop brushes. And there's other sizes I have too in my uh, arsenal over here in the studio. But, uh, you know, these are the kind of main ones I would use. And these are pretty much for medium sized paintings or even large paintings, and I have the larger mop brushes for really, you know, the full size sheet of paper type paintings. But these two here would be fine for the painting we're doing. Actually, this one might work the best probably, but we could, we could still try these out, but let's see what they do when we uh, put these onto the, and this is just a test piece of paper. So if you're used to using, and we'll also use a few of the round brushes that we normally use. So these here are the um, travel brushes. Uh, sable brushes, sable hair brushes, travel brushes by Da Vinci, and these are squirrel hair uh, mop brushes. So we'll use all of these in our painting. But for right now, if you're not used to using mop brushes, these are really, you know, fantastic brushes. You can use lots of water, lots of paint, and get a lot of wash on your painting quickly and add that really beautiful, exciting look of lots of water moving around and paint on the paper. Really does look great. So let's just say we'll take some colors here and we're going to use maybe these colors. We're going to definitely use these colors in the painting. So we have some raw sienna, some uh, yellow ochre. We'll take some um, alizarin crimson like this. And we'll take some cerulean blue down here with a little purple. Violet and a lizard, um, maybe even some uh, cobalt blue. So some blue and purple down here. And then some gold and red up top. So what we'll do is, if we look at the photograph here, it's pretty much lots of gold, yellow ochres and reds here in the buildings in this um, beautiful street scene here. It's actually an, um, uh, an alleyway through an um, area where there's some um, lots of uh, apartments and things in Italy. This is an Italian scene here. And uh, I think it might be Spain or Italy. In any case, let's um, kind of get an idea of getting that first wash on. So again, we're going to use lots of water. Mop brush holds tons of water. And then we're going to go in and get our gold and reds here and just start kind of looking at the painting and saying yeah there's a lot of golds and reds over here on the side of the painting so right away you can kind of see we're getting in that first bit of wash and then a little bit of blue and purple over here for the cooler section for the center and there's even a little bit of green viridian green put that up here maybe a little bit of viridian green here like this All right, so look how much wash we've been able to put on that paper right away. And that would be our first glazing. You can get a little more yellow and gold for over here on the sides. But you can get that right on your paper first thing. And then uh, maybe a little more red here and gold, yellow ochre and uh, lizard and crimson. And maybe we go a little darker over here like this. There's a little bit of a little bit of gold and red too in the other areas, but that's pretty much what we're seeing here for that first glazing. And you can see how quickly and loose and fun this was to get that first glazing over the whole page. Um, if you wanted to, um, maybe don't ever be afraid. Have a tissue with you or a paper towel when you're working. If you find you see an area, maybe you think you put some too much paint in there, too much wash. So maybe in this center area too, we want to just lift up a little bit of paint and get a little more light in there. You can just take a tissue and go in here and lighten it up a little bit if you want like that. Maybe some down here too. So you can always do that. You can get more light in your painting by just lifting up a little bit of your wash if you have to, if you feel you went too dark. But the fun thing about this is, is our washes, our glazes with the glazing technique, and that's what we're using right here. And you'll always hear me, just for a little side note here, You'll always hear me talk about the glazing me uh, method or the um, a la prima method in my videos and also in my book. And I hope you check out my new book below in the comment section. 
uh, all the whole entire book is uh, in a quick two-minute video, so you can see all the pages of my book. Uh, so you won't be uh, kind of at a loss to what's in the book. You'll see all the paintings. I have really tons of paintings in the book. Beautiful paintings that are all done in either a la prima or glazing technique. And I use both of them all the time. And I explain that in my book in detail. So I'll be explaining the same idea that we're doing right here, right now. And that is, you get your first, for the glazing method, you're getting your first light wash over the whole paper. And this is a really highly effective way of doing that, even to the highest degree, using a mop brush. So you get your washes on super fast, super quick, and that's the first part of the painting. And then when we come back, we'll start working in the details here. Now, this is just a fun way and a piece of scrap paper to show you what the mop brush does. And when we come back, we're going to lift off this paper. I'll just take a quick break. We're going to lift off this paper and we're going to create the, a, you know, the painting that you saw just in the beginning of the video. And also, too, I wanted to mention, the painting that we just that we just did in this video that'll be on my um, community tab in my homepage, YouTube homepage. So you just have to go. Well, you're already in YouTube. Maybe when you're done with the video watching, you can just click on my name on the video. And if you click on my name at the top of the video, right under the picture, you type you know you click on Chris Petrie. That'll bring you to my homepage on YouTube, and then you can click on the community tab. And on that community tab, we're going to have the pencil drawing and the finished painting on there. So you'll be able to work from either the finished painting or both, the sketch and the finished painting. You'll have those both in photograph form. So you have those pictures um, online for you, right on YouTube, right on my home channel, under the community tab, which is when you open up my homepage, Chris Petrie. Right there, you'll see the word community. Click on that and you'll see the photographs of this painting, finished painting, my pencil sketch, and I'll even put on this photograph too as well. All right, so I'll take a quick break now just to get reset up. We'll take this off and start our sketch on the uh, the uh, watercolor paper that we have right underneath here. Okay, be right back. All right, so let's get reset up here. Uh, I'm going to take a tissue and just blot up some of this extra paint that we have down here on the paper. So this was our fun, you know, scrap paper. You can use regular printer paper if you want to. So if you want to practice up with your um, mop brushes, if you purchase a new couple new mop brushes, um, you know, you'll definitely, it'll be great if you can just take some printer paper so you're not wasting your good paper, uh, your good watercolor paper, and you can practice just, you know, just working with the brush a little bit, seeing the different shapes you can get with the mop brush, how much water is on it, get a little familiar with it maybe for 10 or 20 minutes and then you'll be ready to go in and work on your watercolor paper and your finished painting. So that's what we'll do here is we'll just lift this up and we'll, we have our paper underneath our paper all set up here, ready to go. Okay, so this is our finished watercolor paper here. And then what I'll do is, uh, just to make it simple, I'll just go around here with a uh, pencil. So you can kind of see the the basic uh, rectangle that we're working with. We're working in a uh, portrait format, which is really nice to work in, especially for street scenes. You can get some of these really nice, beautiful, like upright, vertical type of uh, uh, dynamics in your, your paintings. And it really looks nice. You see a whole lot of the vertical... Uh, scene with lots of the ground level and going up into the first, second, and even third floors above. So you really see a lot of the vertical portions of this scene, which is great. Makes you feel like you're kind of in a real, like a, like a valley with some mountains up on the sides, you know, looks great. So let's uh, take a look at this. And I think pretty much we can say that if we're want to just do some hash marks, let's I'll take a Sharpie and I'll just sort of look at this quickly just to get some hash marks in here. Uh, we could see that this green uh, door here to this apartment is um, off center. So the center of the painting is like that. And then if we go a little bit to the right, you can see that's where the door is. So the door is not on center. It's kind of off center a little bit to the right. And we could even see these walls here these vertical walls of these buildings alongside here that are creating this um, uh, alleyway here. They're a little bit, you know, about uh, not quite halfway across the painting for this on the left and then maybe a 
quarter of the way over, third of the way over for this. So let's get those starts to what we're looking at here. So maybe we call that like a third here or about a quarter. So we'll put a hash mark there for the, you could say wall. And then over here, the same thing. There's a wall here. And just approximates. Then you can kind of come up here and you're going to say that this is the same thing up here, the wall. Vertical walls going up this way. And then um, I would notate this here. There's like a, um, this looks like to me planters underneath windows or doors up on the upper floors, planters uh, for flowers and things. So those are, they start about right here. And then they go this way and you could put uh, planters. And that's really the other item I might put in would be like this here, the, the beginning of the staircase. So you can look at this painting and say, wow, the beginning of that staircase right there, that's only like very, very minimal amount uh, up from the bottom. It's not even a, so if we broke this painting down into half, quarter, it's probably like one eighth up, a little bit more than one eighth up from the bottom of the painting. So not too far up. You can kind of see it's about there. This would be about halfway. So that's about halfway. Then a quarter is about here. And then you can see it's a little bit below the quarter mark, hash mark. If you're making hash marks and doing this like a recipe, <laughs> I always think of recipes because I'm always hungry and I'm always thinking of making some cool recipes like pasta with uh, some really good fresh seafood and garlic and onions in there and shallots and par fresh parsley and all that good stuff, glass of wine with it. But anyway, this is like, um, if you did want to just get a feel for it, you could say, and you can even use rulers. Don't be afraid. If you want to use rulers, do that. You can have a ruler and you take that and you just say, well, what's our dimension for our full height of our painting? And that's approximately eight inches. So you could even go there and say, okay, eight inches, halfway, four inches right here, four inches right here. Uh, and then you could say, you know, that's the halfway point, half, quarter would be two. That's three quarters up here, and then one quarter down here. One, two is a quarter of the way here. So you can kind of see that this is below the quarter point. This is where the big steps begin, right here. The staircase going up to that door. And then you could even say, where does that door look like it sits? The top of the door looks like halfway. So you could say that the top of the door is probably here. You can make a note and say top of door. So you can make little notes for yourself as you're putting your hash marks in so that when you begin to do your pencil drawing, you kind of know where everything needs to land. Because that's one of the most challenging parts of drawing is starting it and then not knowing where things are going to sort of need to be starting and stopping. So it might be that it's really hard to figure out where the uh, steps are going to start and stop and where that door is going to start and stop going vertically like this. And then oh, same thing over here going across your picture. Where is that first building wall going to stop? And where is the next one going to begin? And how much space is in between? And then you figure we figure this all out together right from the start. So we have it right here. And then, you know, you can look at the painting too and use a ruler if you have it on your phone, this painting. Or you print it out as a picture. You could measure your photograph and say, wow, that's actually half the size of this painting. So now, four inches here. Two inches equals halfway across the painting. Here we have eight inches, so halfway across the painting going vertically is four inches. So that kind of makes it easy if you're kind of using easy uh, breakdowns of your scale. If that makes sense, does that make sense? Where if you're, let's say you're going to create a painting and you want to use this photograph on your phone or you print it out, you could measure your photograph first and say, okay, well, if my photo is four inches, I could make my painting 8 inches high or even uh, 16 inches high or 12 inches and then you just work with those divisions, those space divisions. So you know if you have a 4 inch picture going vertically this way and then you take 8 inches this way for your watercolor paper, 
Well, then you have everything all worked out. It's easy to remember that, wow, yeah, four inches is halfway between eight. Quarter of the way is six. And then up from or down from the top is two. Or if you spin your ruler around the other way, you can do it this way, which is a little more sensible. The only thing is I have a, I have a, a board up here across from me, and I can't use my ruler that way. So I could always get another ruler here. This one here will work. So you could take your ruler and go this way and say, okay, eight inches this way. And we take it and say, this is going vertically this way. The ruler is going vertically, so one, two, three, four, halfway. Five, six, seven, eight. Then you have your top. Then you say, where, where are my quarter points? Two, half, four, six, three quarters, and then eight, full. So that's your quarter divisional points, hash marks. And you can do that too across this way. So imagine you're just trying to break things down a little bit with your ruler, or if you want to do it by eye and just say, yeah, that's about halfway, that's about a third or a quarter. But that's really how we always do it here. So if you're if this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. I know I go through a lot of details sometimes and it drives people crazy sometimes, I know, but this is really the way to do it. And this way you can't go wrong. And so let's try it out and see how all of our hash marks are gonna work for us right now. Um, I'm gonna go with a more I'm going to use this pencil here. This is a, a 8B, Statler 8B, Mars Lumograph pencil. These come in little tins. I buy them by the tin or by the pencil box, and I buy quite, I use a lot of pencils, so I'm always buying them, purchasing them. I get everything on Amazon. All these art supplies, by the way, are down below in the comment section, so you can just click on any of these art supplies, and you can find them on Amazon. If you need to or you want to shop around a little more, that's fine for better prices or different you know styles and things but these all my art supplies I really I swear by them I use them all the time they've worked for me for numbers and many many years can't go wrong I definitely know they'll work and perform great for you so I'm just gonna get some rough pencil lines here this one's coming down this way which is right here and this is about a quarter of the way so that looks good or you know quarter of the way down that's about where that wall stops there and then it goes down vertically this way okay so you have these two lines I'll make them dark so we can see them on the video and then over here this one's just straight this wall here does not have any um, we can't see the we can see features here in this part of the building on this side which are very noticeable with strong shadows and strong colors, so we have to capture that right there. This here is just a straight vertical line. You could take a ruler and make this vertical line here for this building on the right side. You could take that and just make it a vertical like that. And there you have it. Then we come in next with our uh, horizontal for our stairs, our steps, and we said that was about a little bit below quarter of the way up from the bottom. That's like here. And then maybe this here comes over this way a little bit, and it does. It comes down this way. So there we have a little more. And you can use your eraser a little bit to figure some things out, some lines. I would always go lighter. Do your pencil sketches lighter, you'll never go wrong. I'm doing them darker so you can see them, what I'm doing here. <laughs> I can't imagine if you're sitting out there trying to figure out what I'm drawing and you can't see the pencil lines. That's why I'm using this nice dark 8B uh, pencil here so you can see those dark lines. Okay, so we have the vertical over here. That's that one wall to the right. Building to the right and then a building to the left. And we can see those dark shadows and things under here which are the actual planters for the flower pots and things. And then this is all light here, because this is lighter back this way. Strong sunlight's pouring into this alleyway right here on this wall. So if you could imagine, the sunlight's coming from behind us way up above. And it's striking this wall here, the sunlight. So the sunlight's really bright on this wall. And then the light kind of just filters down into this space here, this alleyway going through. So let's uh, continue working on this. Uh, we have the staircase here. And then again, we said the top of the door is here, halfway point approximately. So let's make our door here, approximately here. And it's actually a little over to the right. 
So let me just use my kneaded eraser. And again, if you're if you're drawing in your pencil lines really light, you won't have a problem. It'll be easy to erase your your pencil lines. But I'm going a little darker here. All right, so the actually you have to be about here, like that, and that's the door there. And then the staircase is here. And then it just comes down on an angle like this, the staircase. And there's smaller stairs as they are up here. They're a little, the lines are tighter together. You can imagine the staircase. And then as they get down lower, they're just a little bit larger, but not much. Just something to notice that you can make them a little larger at the bottom, but not much more. It's and we can just make them the stairs here, the, the stair treads of the staircase. Those just kind of blend right into the wall over here on this wall. And then we have the door. And then over the door we have a small, looks like a um, small area that's indentated. It's an indentation in the wall. And then like a small... So there's some features over here, but we're not going to get really too much concerned about some of these features. I also see that there is another wall over here. Very lightly though I'm going to put that wall in. It's about here. Vertical wall, but very very lightly like that. And there's some windows over here. Like that on that wall. And over here again we did see the planters over here. Like that. And then this planter is like this, like that. And then there's other vertical lines like this. And then if we come over here, we can see that there's, over here there's an arched doorway. Let's get in the tables here. So there's a, there's a table over here, like this, an oval table. And then there's another table here, like this, like this. And these are tulip tables, like this. And then there's some lattice over here that goes up to about a little bit above the bottom of the door, up here like this. So we'll put some lattice here, like this. No need to get into a lot of details with this. You're gonna, we're gonna make this a loose painting. So we'll just make these lattices very, very loose, just like that. We'll paint them in with the brush, and these lattice effects are right down behind the tables too, like that. And uh, what else do we have? I think that's pretty good there. And then we're gonna. We're actually going to make sure we get some of these really good darks here. So this this door here is about here. So I'll take my ruler and we're going to get some of these darks in. And they go right down to the bottom of the painting from the top of the painting about above the three quarter mark there. And these doorways come down and they they are like this, like that. And then we have a few more features here, but I think we're gonna leave this more simple. I might not get into 100% of the details, and like I always say, create the drawing and the painting to suit yourself. You're the artist. If you, you know, we're doing a quick tutorial on using some different brushes that are going to loosen up our work and make our work look a little bit more, um, uh, again, loose and free. So that doesn't mean you have to sit here and spend six hours drawing. Don't do that. Give yourself the freedom to just get a few notes of um, ideas that you're seeing here on the you know, on the on the painting, a couple of lines, just put some vertical lines in here and there. We definitely want to get this beautiful lamp in here. Uh, there's some 
horizontal lines. There's actually a small canopy over here. I want to get that in like this. And there's a light underneath that canopy too. So I'm going to do a, a light there. There's a light under this canopy here. And then up here, there's a, a lamp coming out. I, I tend to like rulers. I do use them often. So we'll use a smaller ruler here like this, and we'll use that to get our um, lamp that's over here coming out from the building. The building has many different lines and things. Let me get the uh, arch over here. And again, sometimes everything doesn't work out you know, exactly like the picture. Don't worry about it. Again, we're going to get that first arch here arched doorway here then there's a, a like a regular um, standard uh, rectangular doorway here I'm gonna try to get these lines pretty much they're all going the same angle for the most part a lot of these are going similar angles like this across for the doors tops of the doors and I'll just drop this here like that and go down this way and that's the other doorway here you have the arch doorway here and that's pretty good and <clears throat> what else do we have here we have a small detail on the building it's like a, a water table or a small um, band that goes across the building like that nice way to just add a little another line coming in this way but you do see that that strong dark line there that's a band that's across the building facade here on the left side <clears throat> And what else? Did, well, we wanted to do that uh, light, and I wanted to do that right here. So this light fixture is actually right between here, and it comes out this way, and it's pretty much level here. The um, light bracket that holds the light fixture up, the lantern, is like here. And then we have really nice ornamentation here. So you can do some squeak, you know, some nice curly lines and things you can design it up the way you want make it look co really cool and interesting and then here we'll just make our lamp and I'll just use this and just say it's pretty much like a rectangular shape with the top a little larger than the bottom so it's like basically like a rectangle but a little bit larger at top and then we have the top of it here and then a bowl on the top like this so you got that there And there we go. We got the lamp detail there. Looks really good. And then one, we have some, we have a, uh, a line going across like this to the other facade over here. Okay, so I think we have enough detail in here that we have what we want. Enough detail that when we start painting, we won't run out of um, features in this scene and that's what we want to avoid is having a problem where we haven't put in enough detail but we put in plenty of detail here can you see that that's quite a bit of detail I would say anything more than this is not going to help us let's stick with this much detail and that's it and then we have just one line across here that is coming this way and that is a separation line between the foundation and the first floor of the building and uh, I see that I made it too low so again if you have to do some erasing no problem there we go like that on a little bit of an angle it's actually this way it comes down that way all right and we had this here All right, let's start painting. We just have to uh, take a quick break now. We've been doing a lot of pencil drawing. I always suggest, just a tidbit of information, it's up to you, totally up to you. Some of you I know have really good concentration. You can work for hours and hours and hours and you, you don't need a break, but I'm always finding that I need about uh, a break every 20 minutes or so just to like 
relax a few minutes, sit down. I'm standing up right now as I'm at my uh, art table here. And then, um, you know, if I'm sitting down, I'll stand up maybe and stretch after, you know, half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour. But uh, you, d you do the best uh, things that are going to work out for your um, yourself when you're doing your paintings and your drawings. But now that we've done a lot of drawing, I want to just rest for a few minutes, five, ten minutes, and then I'll come back and we'll start painting. All right, we're picking back up again, and I just wanted to let you know that um, it's always good to refer back to your, um, if you're doing some practice runs with some, remember how we did our practice run with our paper? So now this has dried quite a bit. This has been like 45 minutes since we did this first exercise when we just were kind of getting a feel for our new um, mop brush here and our, you know, mix, mixing out our watercolors here. Uh, and you can see it's pretty decent, like the color and value is pretty close to this here. We're going to obviously need more darks on top of this, but this is our first glazing. And I think this, if we shoot for the same uh, amount of water and paint that we mixed the first time, and we kind of, you saw that in the beginning when we were starting out doing our practice run, you'll see that that's going to work well because this is the finish, basically the finished product. The paper is now almost 100% dry. And you can see how it's kind of like will do fine if we set this up first on our first glazing on this, just like this. Then when we're 100% dry like this, then we go over and you'll see we get all the darks in. Does that make sense? So basically the glazing technique is really just layering in your first light wash to get basically a good uniform nice overall wash on your color on your paper and then after that you're going over with a um, secondary uh, glazing or wash with the, the darker colors and then you kind of finish up with the darkest darks and the ornamentation of things you know like the lamp and some of the doorways are going to need some really nice darks in there the archway in this doorway here some of the lines on the buildings um, a few more uh, things over here like this lamp and um, awning over the top of this doorway over here in the distance. The door is quite a bit, uh, well it's green and that's pretty dark. If you squint your eyes and look, that green, uh, Verdian green actually, it's pretty, it's a pretty dark tonal value. It's, a, a, you know, a medium to dark uh, tone in the painting. And then of course the really super darks over here, these doors over here um, that are on the right hand side over here that we drew in. So you'll see that everything's going to come together beautifully, and that's the fun of the glazing technique and the glazing method. You have a fun time getting your first wash over the entire painting. Let it dry 100%. You can use a blow dryer if you want, or you can let it dry naturally, and then you come back over the second glazing and second washes with your uh, darker tonal values. And then you kind of finish up once that's dry, then you come in with your final darkest darks, and you do in, like your ornamentation and dark darks that you'll see in the painting and you can once you get used to that uh, technique and method of doing the glazing technique then you can sort of also work a little bit more seamlessly when you're doing your paintings you can kind of you don't have to necessarily let everything dry 100 percent if that makes sense you can kind of get more of a really nice effect of things like washes flowing together um, on your painting uh, instead of let, letting everything dry 100%. But if you're just starting out, or if you're kind of not really 100% used to working in the glazing technique and glazing method, then that's the way you want to go. You want to let each um, wash or each glazing dry before you start the next one. So basically we're going to do three washes or three glazings on this painting. We're going to do the first light wash, which was this one here we did in the beginning just for fun to practice up on our new uh, brush and some of our paint mixes, colors. Second glazing will be doing some of those medium to dark tonal values. Let that, let that dry 100%. And then finally, just go in there and get those last dark darks, the ornaments of things and the dark darks, the dark shadows, the doors, these dark doors here, and the dark doorways, and some of these darks. So you just find your darkest darks at the last uh, juncture of your painting when you're using the glazing method. So that's kind of the opposite of the a la prima method. A la prima method, we do the darks first and then we paint the rest in. Glazing method, it's the opposite, lights first, and then we put in the medium tonal value second, and then finally we finish up with the darks. And once you really get used to that process with the glazing technique, then you can more work seamlessly and just kind of do one wash after the next and kind of blend everything and let everything sort of 
amalgamate together uh, as you're working and you'll kind of get the feel for that as time goes on but that's more of advanced type of work that you'll do when you eventually and work and when you're working a lot in this method all right so let's uh, we're gonna aim for this same kind of look here on this painting let's get started um, again I'll get my large wash brush number uh, mop brush number six get some fresh water <clears throat> we'll get some good washes again here some red lizard and crimson raw sienna yellow ochre so we're having like an orangey yellow gold and some red over here then um, we're gonna have uh, some we'll rinse off our brush now in, a, in uh, some fresh clean water we'll come over here we'll get some of that viridian green over here so I'll get some viridian green started here for some cooler so the coolers colors are the blues and the purples and the and the uh, greens and the reds and the warmer colors are up here we we'll use some cobalt blue over here we we'll use some cerulean blue here we we'll use some uh, violet here and then again we we'll use some of that green verdian green over here sometimes verdian green gets a little bit uh, uh, of a difficult task to get it to reactivate it's kind of a a paint that kind of dries pretty pretty hard it doesn't reactivate all that great sometimes maybe it's the brand I'm using I don't know but that looks good enough and some purple here all right so there we have our colors all good um, at this point let's get our first wash in there let's go with our reds and and see how I'm, I have tons of water on here and you just take your brush you hold your brush higher up here now this is like kind of the opposite you'll see me work most of the time when I'm painting I'm holding the brush really close here like this and I have my hand on the paper and I'm resting my hand all the time on the table and I'm painting with this type of method when you're using mop brushes and a lot and lots of water you're gonna be kind of like lifting your hand up on the brush higher and you're gonna want a, a looser feel and that's what I'm saying if you want that looser look and you want to kind of start to develop some different techniques you can do that and it's no problem at all you're just kind of you know holding your brush higher up and using more water and using the mop brush to do lots of large washes at one time we'll get more paint no problem red lizard and crimson yellow ochre and we're doing more of the the washes like this and maybe some more gold in there like that so I'm just gonna get some of that gold in there And then I rinse off my brush again. Sometimes if you need to take off a little bit of water, extra water, you don't want too much water on your brush, you can always take a paper towel and dry off your brush like this. Then you can infuse a little bit of the blue in the green over here in this center area and just blend it right in with the orange. And you have more of that cool feel going right down the center here and the purples over here and the blues so you got the blue and the purple in the center and then you you can mix and mingle the colors a little bit too don't feel like you have to just but you have to do this fast you can't blend all these colors uh, you know taking 10 or 15 minutes see how I did this quickly this how, this is how you have to approach it this first glazing that we're doing right now um, I want to do a little more gold maybe you can also lift off a little bit with your paper towel or tissue. I just want a little more yellow. I want a little too red on this over here. I want this more gold and you know, yellow ochre, yellow, you know, that beautiful yellow ochre color, the stone colors of the golden stone colors, and uh, maybe a little bit of gold too in the center. But like again, this is it. We can't do anything further. And then you can always, again, get a couple lights in there. Maybe just blot up a couple areas with some light. Blot some, you know, get some texture in there. But not too much. You don't want to ruin the effect of the wash. And then up here, it's a little bit lighter. Up top, if you went too light, no problem. Blot up some paint. That's where the light's striking. The sunlight's up in the top of the painting, all the way up in the scene, striking this wall and then illuminating the rest of this scene. So we want to make sure we have that same light in our picture. 
and I think we've got it. That's it. All right, now it's, we have to either blow dry this now or let it dry for like a half an hour. It's up to you, but we'll come back in just a few minutes and start to work on our second glazing. Okay, but that's the first glazing. That should be plenty fine enough. Maybe a little bit of the orange and gold there, just a little bit on the steps, like that. And we also need some of that green, but we have to get it in kind of quick. The green has to kind of go in there fast before it dries. All right, that's all we have to do is work quick on this first glazing. All right, I think it looks great. All right, we'll come right back in about half an hour, 45 minutes, or if you have a blow dryer, quickly dry this off in five, 10 minutes, and we're back to work. All right, so we had that uh, first glazing completed, and now after about 15, 20 minutes, it's uh, quite dry. You'll see there, I'm not sure if you can see this on camera, but it, the paper has a touch of buckling to it but nothing that's going to give us a problem as far as painting over our second glazing now. So this is the point where um, we'll probably shift over to a um, round brush. So we did the first glazing with our mop brush. Now we'll use our round brush. Let's see if we can get some of these medium tonal values. Um, and I, I think yeah, we should be able to get the next uh, glazing here with our round brush. And this is a number um, 8 travel brush, Da Vinci uh, travel brush. You can use a number eight or a number six uh, round brush, uh, natural hair brush or synthetic brush, whatever you have. I always put my um, brushes, art supplies, down below in the um, uh, comment section. Uh, th those that are available uh, on Amazon, most of my art supplies are available on Amazon, so you can check out the uh, supplies below if you want to. And uh, in any case, what I'll do is um, I'll start out and We'll look at these darks here and say, let's start getting in some of the medium and dark darks. We'll just start uh, working it that way. So we're going to take some burnt umber um, to get a good dark with French ultramarine blue. So French ultramarine blue and burnt umber over here on the right hand side is going to get us a really good dark. And it's kind of a warm and cool dark. It's got some blue, some brown. And uh, we'll start to um, look here and we'll start to so at this point I'm just going to start putting in these darks here you could take this and kind of go like that and then clean up the edges if you know if your edges aren't perfect you can do that but those are pretty dark there and if you if you see, if you're looking at the photograph and you say, oh, you know what, it looks a little too dark, so that I just painted a little bit too much paint, again, you can always lift up a little bit of paint here and there if you have to, if you want to. There's no harm in that. You try to get your values the first time really good, but, you know, if, if it's, if for some reason you, you went too dark with something, you could, that's fine. You can just blot up a little bit. Especially if you're just starting out painting in watercolor, you know, it takes time to get all your washes perfect, you know, or where you want them. So here we have um, the case where we're going to be rinsing our brush off, drying off a little bit of water, and then working in our, um, our washes here. Now this here I added a little bit of um, Viridian Green to this color because I see some green in there. I see some more green in there too. So let's make our darks with some dynamics to them. Not everything, just one tonal value. Let's, this here is very dark, I notice. So. so we could just come in here and we get our dark darks here. There is a little bit of a... So this is something where you can go down like this, take your brush and just slide your hand on the your working board, your working surface, and get this dark in just like this. And this dark is like this, right next to it. So I'm just going to get that next dark over here, right next to it. If you need to mix up some more uh, French Ultramarine Bloom Burnt Umber, please do that. 
always have a little bit of extra paint as you're working. You don't want to run out. And if you run out, no big deal. You just come back in and mix a little bit here. So you see I'm just going right next to this one. Like that. And then I rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the water here. Pick up a little more of that green. Let's get some green in there. So I'll put some green. And believe it or not, you will see some of this beautiful Viridian green if you add it into the darks here and there. You'll see it. It does look good. And what else? We do have some darks over here. And this is where you start to go in and do some details from what you're seeing here, but you're not getting too involved with every little aspect of the details. You're just sort of you see that there's some lines, so you put some lines in like that. You come over here. We might see that there's some there's some darks up here. Now sometimes when I'm working like this, you could always use a um, a dowel and rest your hand on a dowel or a piece of uh, trim or wood, something you might have around the house. And that helps to just have a little bit of a more easier time painting in some lines. And you can blot up a little bit too to lighten up some of the lines if they're too dark. A um, little bit of blue in here too. So I'll do some lines with some blue in it. Like that. Blot up a little bit here and there. Okay, a lot of vertical lines in this painting. And this over here too is a little bit... Uh, some blue. So I will try to mix in some blue. I am seeing some blue shadowing up here. This might be a window. I think it is. It's a window. It's picking up some of that sky color. So I'll put some of that in. Window there. There's a little bit of a darker dark over here. So you'll see I'm just starting to put in some details now. Like that. There's some orangey color up here. So I'm just going to, I'm looking up here. A little, bit, a little bit darker there. Like that. A couple of splashes. Don't be afraid to splash a little bit here and there. Get a little bit of a effect. Uh, I see some green over here on the walls. I see some darks up here, so now we're going to get some of those darks underneath those planters, flower boxes. We have a squarish edge there. And if some of them get a little bit uh, blend in with some of the wash, don't worry about it. You could get some of these Some of these lines across. So essentially what we're doing here is just getting the, we're just looking, constantly referring back and forth to our painting and to the photograph and just basically making notes on, in our mental notes on what are we seeing here, what colors, and you can just work it as you go. I'm going to empty my water and put some fresh clean water in my uh, water bucket. I notice my water bucket's getting a little murky. It's always good to change out the water after a few. Can't hurt. And then uh, again you can lift up a little bit of paint with your paper towel or tissue if you want to lighten up an area or two. Let's get that Viridian green door in here. 
So that's Viridian Green and a little bit of uh, Sap Green. So we'll do that. Ah, oh, that looks good. That looks great. And then we're going to go with a little bit of a darker green. So I'll mix in a little bit of blue, French ultramarine blue with that green. And there's a little bit of a darker tonal value there. And maybe a little bit over here. So that's good. And then we're going to start to put in some of these uh, stair treads. So we have some stairs here. I'll mix up the colors a little bit. I noticed they are different. They're not all the same. There's some green on there. Have some fun. Don't get too serious with it. Let it let it happen with the, the lines going across here. Then there's some splashes of green I'm going to put in. Or some dabs of green over here. It looks like there's some uh, even some yellow in here. Some uh, cadmium lemon yellow. There's a little bit of some yellow, some, this looks like flower pots and things, and some grass, a little bit of plantings, so have fun with that. There's some more up here too. Okay, and then there's some blue down here and purple. Just this feeling of coolness down here on the tables too. Let's get our tulip tables here, glass top tables. They're like this here. And then we can actually lift up a little bit of paint from those. A little bit of shadows underneath them, like this. And then you don't worry about the bottom of the painting. You want to leave that loose. That's not something we want to focus on, the bottom of the painting here. This is where you would splash and just add a little bit of wash, maybe, like this, like that. Add some water to it, make it loose looking. We'll add some more details to the tables here in a few. We'll put in that lattice too, as well. But we still have to get some of that orange and yellow, yellow ochre and lizard and crimson. I noticed that we Still need to get some of the, those washes still over here, like that. Okay, can always add a little bit of that to the mix here. Burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. Maybe we'll darken this up down here a little bit. Take some artist liberty. We'll darken up this area down here, same over here. Okay. And again, this is about painting loose, lots of water, lots of uh, fun. Okay, I'll lift up a little bit here and there. That's good. Okay, and then as we work this here, we notice there's a dark canopy over here. that and a light so we have a light here some of these details we can do also with the uh, finer brushes we'll do that maybe we'll do some finer details with the brushes with the um, needlepoint brush there we have another detail a little bit of green here so we have some different colors we're trying to mix and mingle here some blue 
got lots of light coming from the center down here. And I'm thinking that looks pretty good now. The top of the painting, the bottom of the painting looks good. We loosened that up. Um, we have the top up here. We add some blue to some sky. Feeling of the blue of the sky, cerulean blue. Fresh, clean water. We don't want muddy water at this point to get some of this nice blue up here. We have to have that. Uh, we have to have that um, clean water so that you get a nice, beautiful wash of blue over some of this. Maybe up here, and then even down here too. Some purple. purple up here too but this is very light up here so I'm just gonna blot up some of this I wanted to get some color on there but that's very light and I think we're looking really good now at this point um, what are we gonna do next probably our best bet right now is to let this dry because the best uh, way to sort of minimize like a lot of paints flowing all over the place and kind of infiltrating into other areas you don't want it to that's where you kind of you can minimize that by just letting the next wash dry so I'll just do a little bit of that there some more lines here some vertical lines lots of vertical lines on this painting like that same thing over here Again, I might take my uh, wooden dowel just so I can get some more uh, some more vertical lines here. You can almost just take your brush and kind of ride it along the the side of the uh, whatever you might have. You know, you can use a uh, wood you can use a ruler I have uh, wood dowels I sometimes work with wood dowels for different projects or whatever around the house so you can do different things we're just trying to get a couple good vertical lines where they're not you know kind of going off in this direction or that direction we want to keep all our vertical lines pretty much in this painting all the way always straight up and down plumb that's one of the keys to this painting which is a real Probably the main, the main um, compositional idea in this painting is the vertical lines. There's just vertical line after vertical line going all the way across the whole painting, and that gives it the feeling of like, you know, um, uh, excitement of vertical feeling of like upwards, like mountains on the side here. This is like mountains on the sides of our valley here we're going through. So if we just make sure we keep these lines, these vertical lines, pretty much straight going vertical all the way plumb so we don't want them turning this way or this way or this way we want to keep all those vertical lines going across our painting just like it is in the photograph they're all straight plumb like this all the way across and then you have some of the angular lines like this and that's basically the, the tops of the doors here you can put a couple of those in like that a couple of splashes for uh, texture like that uh, I wish I I think we could get a little more of a gold feel some raw sienna some of these went a little bit more orange. I think it's alright though. So the next time we do this painting, we're going to probably try to get a little more yellow ochre versus we went a little bit toward the red, which looks okay too. It looks fine. There's lots of red in here too. And orange. But I like yellow ochre a lot too. I like red. I like the warm colors. Those are beautiful colors. I uh, can't go wrong with any of the warm, beautiful colors of the sun, sunlight, yellow ochre sunlight, and uh, red, sunsets, and all that great colors, fantastic for this type of painting. 
and we have the beautiful light coming in from again over here in the center of the painting this way so I think we have good and made you know have this looking good and always you can remember to make a painting uh, seem like it's got more light we would kind of go a little darker with certain things so we might take some more burnt umber and uh, French ultramarine blue with maybe some alizarin crimson too like this and you could get a little darker down here in the bottom of the painting like that here and there um, I like this idea of the these are the tables even though I don't see the light or the dark down here like this I'm gonna say that I want to make this darker down here at the bottom of the painting like this and I think that will translate into a better light for the center of the painting here might lighten that up a touch there and we have a few more details that we're going to do so let's finish up with um, Let's finish up with some details. I just wanted to get this up here for that little detail up top, which is like a window. And uh, maybe some dark in there too. I think a little more orange too over here in the staircase area. I think I went a little bit too much uh, with so I'm going with a little bit of a darker steps here and a little bit of orange too and yellow and gold in this section so that it all kind of flows together and I will do a little more Viridian Green up here if I have a lot of Viridian green here uh, I definitely want to start to put some of that in the other parts of the painting just so that everything kind of ties together And if you need to get a like a sort of a straight line somewhere where something is uh, a wash is getting out of control, no big deal. If you wanted to, you could take a paper towel, fold it up, make a crease in it like this. Make a crease in your paper towel, and then you can just carefully go in and if you have to make it smaller so you don't over extend it, you just do that. And that kind of worked good there, like that. Add a little bit of water to there, a couple spots on the steps, I'll add a little more water. All right, let's come back and finish up with some of the very fine details that we talked about some of the lattice over here by these uh, tables uh, this lamp up here lantern light and um, over here to this light we're gonna make a little more with some detail and I think that'll be it I think we'll have everything completed so we'll uh, take a look uh, after it dries we'll come back take a look at it and see what we need and then we'll be finished all right so we're at this point now where we I just used the blow dryer to pretty much dry this really well um, it's almost um, it's 100% dry actually right now um, I'm gonna do a little bit of um, I'll maybe make a little bit of green and burnt, burnt umber I'll just do a little finger painting here just to get a little texture um, so I'll, I'll just get some texture on this door here like this I'll take my um, needlepoint brush for some details. So I'll just use some of the um, 
dark dark that we used, which was a uh, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, a little bit of uh, lizard and crimson. And then I'll just dry off my brush a little bit so that I don't have too much on there. And then I'll just do a couple quick. So this is the lantern under here. We'll do that. We'll do this lantern up here. So again, this is now when you're just finishing up the details and you're not taking too much time to do the details. So we want to make sure we be aware of the fact that if we take too much care and too much time on the details, it's going to not have that feeling of looseness. So let's let's be careful not to over overdo it with our details. Let's make sure we get them in looking good, like this here for that lamp. And then we're going to go across here and just do that. You have to get a little bit of extra water here, a little bit of blue. So we'll do the lantern and the, this is the bracket. I'm going to do it kind of some curly type of um, just quickly, you know, almost care, almost carelessly, you know, fun, free. Don't don't feel like you have to spend you know a lot of time on the details. You, sometimes when you do them really fast, they look much better. Or if you just really do them, you know, just get them in and do it. Don't, I would say, because <laughs> I used to fuss around with details so much that I always, um, you know, did, did too much with the details of my paintings. And now I realize it's a lot of fun just to get them in quickly and they look better. And then um, maybe for the, for the lattice over here and the tables, we'll do a little more. So let's do the lattice first. And we, we just noticed that the lattice was a little bit... Um, let's do a little bit lighter of a tone so the lattice wasn't extremely dark so let's go with like a kind of a grayish brown mixture just something like this I wouldn't use any colors different than what you've been using on the painting at all I would make sure you kind of just stick with your colors you used before and you'll be fine for this color this is basically um, raw sienna and then a little bit of the um, the mixture up here which was the burn umber french ultramarine blue and a little bit of lizard and crimson mixed in with a little bit of yellow ochre yellow ochre or raw sienna to give it a little bit of a golden color and to make it a little bit lighter we added more water less paint so these are the lattice and again we didn't spend we're not spending too much time and the lattice goes here and it actually it's actually here underneath the tables too but let's go with a little bit of a darker dark here French Ultramine Blue, Burnt Umber, uh, Lizard and Crimson. And uh, we'll do the tables here. So we're just doing these oval tables like this. I'll just do a little more, like, get some oval shapes to it. And like that. And then maybe that tulip shape underneath there, like so. And like that and that should be fine and I'll take a little more of the and I'll just sprinkle some water on there fresh clean water just to you know maybe loosen that up a little bit for the tables and that should be fine and I just notice these could be a little darker over here a couple a couple of these uh, lines across here where the steps are like that wouldn't do every single st step dark but I think a few of them need to have a little bit of those darks in it like that and maybe even a little bit of a dark under there under the door might look good like that like that and then maybe a little bit of an ornamentation I would use the the um, needlepoint brush again Burnt Umber, uh, French Ultramarine Blue. Dry off a little bit of the brush just so there's not too much paint on there. And maybe we'll have a little handle over here. For the door. Maybe we can shape the door a little better. And this should come out a little more like this so you can almost... 
we can make the door a little better, I think, like that. Like this. And a couple of light, just light uh, uh, horizontal lines across here, maybe a few. And then maybe some more lines up here, just a few like that. Like this. Then there's another window over here. You could put a We could put a lantern over here. Like this. A light there maybe, a little bit of a lantern there. Light fixture there. I think that's it. I'm not going to put any more details now. I think we we pretty much have it. And then maybe just a few, maybe a couple lines here like this, just a few directional lines like this, like this, for some, some uh, cobblestones or t tiles or something like that. And I think that's it. I don't think we want to keep pushing more details again. I always say a little bit less of the details is maybe a little better. You see how it works out though, but I'm glad you joined me here. If it was your first time, glad you're here. Hoping you'll come along for more uh, tutorials on my channel. Chris Petrie is my channel. Again, you can go to that channel. You can click right on my name, right on this video. That'll bring you to my homepage and then you'll see the finished painting, the pencil, pencil sketch, as well as the um, photograph. So I'm hoping you'll uh, do that too if you need to. I don't think I captured the pencil sketch, so um, it'll probably just be the painting and then the photograph, but you'll pretty much uh, have everything you need with the video. In any case, happy painting everyone. Enjoy, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.